Hello friends, in this session I am going to discuss a very important concept of deadlocks which is resource allocation graph. Now resource allocation graph is basically used when you are trying to detect a deadlock, when you are trying to detect a deadlock or you are trying to let's say see, uh, seek for a safe sequence in order to avoid deadlock. So it is basically used in both deadlock detection and deadlock avoidance. So let's first of all see its notation. So since it is a graph, it will be having some arrows and some nodes, right? So now the nodes are basically represented as processes in the form of circles. And there are also other type of things. Now there is a process and then there are resource instances. Resource instances are represented somewhat in this form. That is if let's say I have only a single resource. Let's say I have a resource R1, then I'll represent it like this. Now, if I have only one instance of this R1, I would represent it with a single dot. Let's say if I have more than one instance, let's say I have two instances of the same resource. Let's say this is R1. Now, if I have two instances of the same resource, I would represent it like this. This is R1 with two instances. So, any... Uh, generalized resource ri can be represented in this form wherein these are its instances now these instances can be n instances so just three dots over here in order to say that there can be number of instances over here so now next comes the arrow types now these were the node types the arrow types are what there are two types of arrows in this graph they are request arrow and allocation arrow now the request arrow is what? Request arrow is when a process is requesting for a resource. So it is in the direction of resource starting from process to resource. Right? So it is from process to resource. That is the request arrow. And the allocation arrow is from resource instance to process. So it is from resource instance to process. That is the allocation arrow. So, for example, let's say if I, if I want to uh, represent that process P1 is requesting for a resource R1, I would say this is your request arrow. This is a request which is from process to resource. And if I want to say that a resource R2 has been assigned to this process, I would allocate it in this direction. So the directions of the arrows are different. When it is an allocation arrow, it is from resource to process. When it is a request arrow, it is from process to re uh, resource. So then this is a classic diagram example of a deadlock state. Wherein we have three processes, P1, P2, P3, and we have two resources, R1, R2, each with a single instance. Now, if you just try to understand this scenario, what is the scenario? This P1 is requesting for R1, but this R1 has already been assigned to P2. Now, P2 cannot complete before getting this R2, which has been assigned to P3, but it is P3 is waiting for this R1. So if you see clearly, each process is waiting for some resource and is holding some other resource which some other process is in need of, right? So therefore we can say each process is waiting for some resource which is held by some other process which in turn is again waiting for some other resource. So that is why in this case what will happen is none of the processes will be able to complete and in such a situation we call this situation as a deadlock state. Now how do we identify this deadlock state? This uh, resource allocation graph is basically a, a technique in order to identify whether a deadlock is existing in a system or not. So how do we identify a deadlock? Basically, when we say that there are uh, there are resources with only a single instance and when we draw this resource allocation graph and some cycle is being formed, then we can surely say that there is a deadlock. If the cycle does not exist, then we cannot say uh, with 100% guarantee that the deadlock is not there, but uh, or we cannot say that deadlock will never occur, but 
we can say that deadlock might or may not occur but in case it is a cycle we can definitely say that it is a deadlock state so if i just read this out it would be that if all the resources have single instances and there is a cycle in the resource allocation graph then the system is in deadlock state now generally whenever resources have single instances there is a possibility for formation of a cycle and thus of deadlock generally whenever resources have single instances there is a possibility for formation of a cycle and thus of deadlock that means if there are single instance resources and there is a cycle then we are sure of a deadlock the problem of deadlock gets resolved in the above scenario if we grant two resources two instances of each resource let's see how does that happen so the same scenario what i have done is i have just replaced the resources r1 and r2 with two instances each now so this is the same scenario you can see so what has hap what has happened now is if i just keep both of them side by side p1 was requesting for a resource instance what i've done is now the extra resource instance that i put i have assigned it to p1 fine so its request has been served then there is another extra resource instance over here so uh so i've changed it a bit yes i've changed it a bit fine so now if you see this scenario again a cycle is being formed but let's see if there is a deadlock or not a cycle is being formed but let's see if there is a deadlock or not see in this case p1 only needs this resource instance <coughs> so what I, what is happening over here is p1 can uh, can just uh, complete its work with this resource instance and similarly p3 can complete its work with this resource instance so what will happen now is p1 and p3 are not waiting for any other process once they both complete what will happen is this once p1 complete uh, once p1 completes p4 will get this resource instance and hence it can also complete similarly once p3 completes or p4 completes p2 will get one resource instance of r2 which it is in need of and p2 can also complete so therefore the deadlock is easily resolved now whenever we get such a sequence of processes please pay attention whenever we get such a sequence of processes in which the entire execution is proceeding towards com uh, completion without any occurrence of a deadlock we state that sequence as a safe sequence so it is also mentioned as a safe state in some some of the books so safe sequence is what it is the order of allocation of resources to avoid the deadlock fine so uh, the possible safe sequences in this scenario would be let's say p1 completes first so when p1 completes p4 can be assigned this resource instance p4 can complete p3 can complete independently and finally p2 can complete so one of the sequences p1 p1 p4 p3 and p2 so similarly we can get these many and many more possible safe sequences corresponding to the above scenario So finally let's proceed towards the necessary and sufficient condition for deadlock. Now suppose that suppose that there are n processes and m instances of single resource. Suppose that there are n processes and m instances of a single resource, then process can request and release and and we assuming that process can request and release one resource at a time, then the deadlock will never occur. The deadlock will never occur if the following two conditions occur which are those conditions first is maximum need of every process is less than capital m where m is the number of instances of a single resource maximum need of every process is less than m where m is the number of instances of a single resource and the second condition is sum of maximum need 
should be less than m plus n where n was what number of processes so sum of maximum need should be less than m plus n where m is the total number of instances and n is the total number of processes so that's all for this session of deadlock i'm going to continue this series of deadlock topics so stay tuned for more good work coming up thank you